Hi guys, Frankie V from Frozen Sand with a long overdue episode of working with Power Tools, uh, which is uh, our effort to try to keep our uh, community of urban terrorists <laughs> up to date as to the going on behind the scene. And uh, today I've been working on uh, Turnpike, working on the lighting a bit here as to, uh, well, making it a little bit more of a nighttime scene, but at the same time make it well lit so people can see each other. Uh, and, uh, of course, avoid any problems with uh, player visibility, which is, of course, one of the, the main <laughs> complaints of uh, working on a Tech 3 technology. So, um, in the case of uh, Unreal 4, though, uh, I figure maybe it'd be a good idea, uh, a good time to uh, revisit a theory, an idea, a concept that I did uh, way back when called uh, uh, working with, uh, uh, or or painting with lights. Now, <clears throat> at that time, it was a little bit, obviously, it was a bit difficult under id Tech 3 slash uh, Radiant to be able to properly demonstrate the technique as, as to its proper use because you would have to put the lighting element in, compile the lighting to see the actual result, and then, of course, make uh, ongoing fixes as to as to create a much more, say, let's say, pleasant uh, 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 rendered environment as to uh, lighting effects. Now, uh, with Unreal 4, of course, the uh, lighting uh, uh, solutions that are uh, generated, uh, as opposed to, uh, of course, the, the uh, doing a final lighting uh, build or compiling all the light maps, is that you can get a much better idea of what's actually happening with the lighting and the shadowing effects as you work along. So the theory of, uh, 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 in this case, revisiting the idea of painting with lights in a three-dimensional environment is worthwhile to uh, take another uh, look at that once again. Um, so, uh, what exactly is painting with lights? Now, painting with lights is an actual, is an actual photography type of a theory technique for creating hyper imagery. Now, hyper imagery, um, to kind of give an explanation, explanation behind that, is you're usually dealing with two types of, uh, uh, types of requirements as far as rendering goes or photography goes, uh, or, or anything that is a, uh, a media type of uh, uh, visual representation is uh, what's uh, realistic uh, uh, versus what is realism. Now, realistic is is things that we believe is is actually you know it, it, it's uh, it's a reality. It's a uh, it's a trick trickery, an illusion. Uh, you know, mostly caused by people who are uh, say in entertainment media, like for example uh, movies. Um, you know, it'd be just kind of boring to take a camera or your or, or even a high definition camera and go out and start taking pictures and, and trying to make a movie with these HD cameras without any post processings to make the imagery look kind of a little bit more appealing, have it a little bit more depth, a little bit more exciting uh, versus uh, what would be considered realism, which is just taking your, your camera, digital or, f or film or whatever, going out, snapping some pictures, and then once you develop them or, or upload them to your computer and take a look at it, it's a true representation of what your eyes would actually see, which uh, <laughs> which in most cases is rather boring. Like, uh, you know, it's like uh, uh, watching your best friend's uh, uh, slideshows of his uh, vacation is not that interesting to you. Uh, versus, uh, you know, something that was cooked uh, as far as as the idea of uh, of staging and so forth. So that's, uh, um, I would say, 90% uh, of visualization is is what would be considered realistic because uh, it's all mostly been staged using lighting techniques and uh, three-point lighting and uh, floods and kicks and keys that uh, uh, create a much more pleasing type of imagery than it would be if it was just a flat image as being realism. So uh, that's uh, usually the fail in most of the cases as to realism is because the expectation is to see something that's a little bit more hyper. So uh, by using a technique that's called uh, painting with lights, uh, go to YouTube, look it up. Uh, uh, something of note would be, uh, uh, two videos would be, uh, uh, Stuff, all the stuff done by Eric Curry. He uh, does a lot of really good type, uh, good uh, um, uh, painting with light type to techniques using, uh, which uh, actually kind of starts looking like a normal Rockwell painting. Then it, uh, it's an actual, it's real, it's realistic, but it looks more uh, Norman Rockwell in design. And another person, um, another one, it would be. I'll put the links into uh, into the comments, of course. Is the magic of uh, light painting with Tim Cooper? Who um, you know gives you about an hour and a half worth of uh, lighting theory behind uh, 
a technique of using uh, different various different lighting elements to create hyper imagery things that would look a little bit more impressive give it depth and gives you a lot more control over the final result than you could achieve with say for example a, a key a key lighting or, or a point source so for example this uh, this light here you can see has a, a key lighting on the top here but it has a kicker element down here at the bottom as far as uh, as adding a little bit more lighting splash and detail into into the environment here now <clears throat> give you some ideas of where this type of stuff is being used in is uh is of course in the background how to bring in out the buildings in three-dimensional space let's go ahead and just key this up five four three two one zero fight okay let's do a little bit of running around here just to get a bit of an idea so you can sort of uh, move back to the bit here into the back and you can see that putting the key lighting into the back and increasing its uh, its background contrast versus what's in the foreground actually creates a much more uh, much more, uh, a better depth detail than it would be if we just used a, a single key source lighting. Now, to be able to use the, to achieve this, of course, uh, going back to the to the magic of uh, light painting or the, or the theory behind painting with lights is you, you generally want to start with a totally black environment and then build up your key lighting as you as you move forward to make things a little bit more pop out a little bit more so um that uh, in the detail that would normally get lost so uh, for example you can see that the light back here how that we have this kind of bridge that's falling across we, we're getting some little bit more lighting saturation than we normally would get if we were just relying on on, on key source lighting so that's uh, not to say that uh, you cannot uh, that you can't achieve the desired effect. The issue is is hyper imagery of video games, which kind of just kind of, if you look at it, jumps out at you, which is impo would be impossible to achieve with any kind of uh, source point lighting or uh, global illumination without the assistance of these little things here called kickers. Now the kickers, all they do is they add a lighting saturation to the environment without introducing any kind of uh, shadowing effect. In this case, uh, casting shadow here is turned off, but to get this to be to, to work as, as good as well as it should, then uh, you should just turn this on to casting and then play with your intensity to kind of add a little bit more lighting depth into into the um, into the lighting element as a, as a kicker to bring the uh, the background out a bit. You can also use different things like. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 different lighting colors. You do not want to use an all white. There's no such thing as, as, as far as I know, uh, as a pure 100% white light uh, that doesn't have any kind of offset to its uh, RGB uh, uh, color uh, saturation. So uh, you know, a little bit of a little bit of yellow, a little bit maybe a little bit of uh, orange would help out to, to actually increase the uh, overall contrast of the uh, of the lighting effect okay so I'll, I'll point that out once again uh, I like to start with uh, with uh, at night uh, and then start building stuff up you can see how we can start uh, creating a, a little bit more splash on the buildings as opposed to well if we use this point over here as a point of reference you can see that it's not a very interesting kind of effect but if we were to take a lighting element let's go ahead and just go and drop a light L, uh, point light in here and we'll drop that right about here and we'll bring that up you know we'll have to play around with the reflection a little bit and then we can change the uh, uh, overall source uh, uh, attenuation radius to uh, actually create a, a little bit more interesting type of lighting effect and of course you know we'll just saturate the color a little bit more towards I think maybe a bit towards the orange a little bit more okay I hope uh, having that uh, <laughs> little record button there turned on. And then we can change the intensity level to bring a little, make this area a little bit more interesting. I'm not going to go too nuts. Uh, a thing you might want to watch for is using reverse square. It does tend to fall off pretty rapidly. So you can actually turn that off and create an overall lighting balance. But then you'd have to pull down your intensity, of course. Um, to about one and you can see how we can start filling in the area with a little bit more key lighting and then turn off cast shadows and that kind of ta -da, fills in that area with with the, with an ambient type of light 
So we'll go ahead and turn on the shadows again. You can see how, obviously, we can see that, that, that there's a key source to this light. Well, and if we turn our shadows, then it becomes an ambient type of field that gives us a little bit more control that we cannot achieve with just simply throwing in um, throwing in a, a key source lighting. In this case, like for example, this guy up here that we were talking about earlier, which has a has a, um, uh, which we we'll call it type of uh, a light here, spotlight uh, that's been attached to it, that which controls that kind of key source lighting type of aspect. So uh, this is how we can sort of fill in and fill in and fill in uh, the area until we can get a well-balanced lighting. So in this area here, for example, is another problem area that's obvious that uh, a little bit of a kicker. We can bring that down and we pull that in a bit. Yeah, obviously we got, uh, okay, it's having a hard time with the uh, lighting information here. For some reason, how about our uh, attenuation radius? Bring that down a bit. And you know, we'll bring that open a bit. Uh, obviously, we're having some problem with our with our uh, uh, our uh, containers here. How about if we ramp that up? Oh, uh, we'll take that down to about four. No, okay. We obviously got a, something uh, uh, somewhat of a problem lighting up uh, this uh, these uh, containers here. So uh, I've been thinking of getting rid of these anyways and just tossing in. Uh, let's go back to that again and see what kind of a difference it makes. Okay, that's with it on. Uh, we'll delete that. You can see how it's kind of filling in the area with a balanced lighting. If we once again turn on cast shadows. Uh, it's uh, it's obviously we an identifiable full source for our lighting. We turn that back uh, our shadows off. Uh, a much better control over how we're saturating that area. Uh, we go up to ten. A lot more light go down to one without having to depend on uh, key source lighting uh, we could also do the same thing uh, with uh, with uh, spotlights um, what would be nice is to have uh, uh, what's called a planer or what's also known as an area light which is basically allows to makes a panel that will uh, allow you to drop uh, as a uniform type of uh, lighting effect onto uh, onto an area that doesn't have that you can see this this problem here is we can see the reflection of the light in here and uh, it does have uh, the hot spot you might say where it becomes identical where the light sourcing is so uh, we obviously have to get rid of this uh, ability to create and generate specularity on that surface and an area light would do that for us without having to uh, create the illusion of a, a of a uh, of a, a, a identical point source. Okay, so I, I thought I'd point that out. The idea behind starting with daylight, not with a nighttime scene, is you can start fixing your lighting sources to make make the, uh, things jump out instead of being blended into the background. As to this idea here, that if we look down this long stretch here, is identical. You know, uh, using um, painting with light, it creates a, a identical, an identical, identical uh, direction. That the player should go so uh we know that uh, by looking at the light source that's being illuminated from the background here we know that there's a there's a destination down here that uh, creates a focus of we move we move down here and we go oh there's more direction here where if we create colder spots like if we're looking back this way we can see to the right it might be a little you know if we darken that off a bit we can see that that that's maybe not a direction to go in where this light coming out this side uh, creates the illusion of, uh, of a direction that is uh, that is possible. Um, here's another area that uh, is lacking in detail. So once again, uh, just to point it out, uh, working with the lighting element here, we'll, um, we'll turn off our inverse. Okay, and then we'll go back to our sc light scaling here. It's a little too high. Create that as one, and then uh, we'll increase our attenuation radius to create a much more a much more of a fill type of effect and then we can change obviously our color uh, to add a little bit more interesting um, variation in the color uh, um, that, uh, that it's being generated and not uh, be 100% uh, white saturation okay so 
see that how that kind of starts to jump out a little bit. So uh, in the end, um, just keep in mind once again, uh, lighting elements do not cost you a penny as to performance. It generates a, it generates a, the uh, information into a, the light map, which then of course is free like any other texture that has evolved with uh, with the surface area. We're just changing the uh, overall, let's say, tonal quality of the texture using um, using painting with lights or or uh, point source lights that have been uh, it, uh, that doesn't cost anything as far as performance goes. So uh, I think that's about as much as I want to cover. Um, you know, small value lights uh, can you know by all means if it's uh, if it's um, of any benefit. You know, use some even smaller values where you can really push up the light into into an area to create an interesting detail. Make the image interesting rather than something that looks kind of flat like a pancake. You can see this area back here is not very well lit as to as to making it stand out. So we got some um, we you know we got some painting we need to do in this area here to bring that detail out a little bit. And I'm getting a little bit happy with this area down here that I don't think we really you know it's, <laughs> there is the possibility of too much. So um, I think we've kind of uh, uh, this back area here kind of really demonstrates what I'm going trying to go for as far as uh, bringing the background out. Uh, versus hiding things in, uh, in, you know, not hiding stuff in, in total darkness. Now, the last thing I think I should be covering here is, of, of course, is um, uh, is some of the options that are available to you uh, through the use of of the uh, post processing volume and some of the things that I've added here to uh, kind of help things out. Now, I use a ambient cube map, which this does allows me to do is to control the all overall lighting balance as to uh, the global illumination. In other words, how much intensity of light is being saturated into areas that uh, normally wouldn't see much uh, much in the way of lighting uh, if left on its own recourse. So without this here, for example, let's see if this will turn it. You can kind of see how... how uh, we get uh, all these areas that are kind of pitch black. So using an ambient uh, cube uh, 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 or um, uh, LUTs, uh, L-U-T, uh, that, uh, uh, that's a lookup table for colors as well as HDR images, we can sort of push lighting into areas that normally wouldn't see lights without putting some kind of a lighting element in the background here. Uh, let's see what we got there. You can see that uh, these elements here don't add a whole lot to, as far as intensity goes, uh, as compared to to the post process by adding in um, where are you? By adding in a ambient cube lap, lap it increases obviously the type of uh, using an HDR image it increases and pushes lighting into into areas that should look well somewhat correct. Uh, once again, we're going for something that's realistic and not necessary realism. So uh, this kind of works uh, uh, on that level. Okay, uh, another thing is uh, color grading. Of course, it allows you to create a, you know, play around, do some, do some experimenting with, uh, with uh, 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 light grades, LUTs, as to, um, uh, which is a, a lookup table as to color is being applied as. Well, the best, the best way is to kind of show it off. But it does so if we turn that off you can see that we get this kind of monochromatic type of coloration and all our texturing it becomes somewhat desaturated um, LUTs are used in uh, in film for color correction to add uh, a cinematic quality to it uh, that uh, you normally couldn't achieve otherwise so uh, if we turn on our, our, our LUT our lookup table as far as uh, lighting goes and affects the environment you can see a distinct difference between one and the other and gives us uh, some form of level of uh, tonal control now there are different types of uh, Obviously, as many different types of uh, LUTs that you could make use of, uh, from cinematic uh, to uh, you know, uh, there's uh, you can make things look a little bit more balanced, say for a nighttime scene or what have you. Um, uh, as you can see, I have a mind sight more or less set up for a, a cinematic type of effect, and uh, and uh, we can control once again uh, color and total balance to make it uh, visually more appealing. 
now uh, you know I'm not <laughs> into the uh, into the whole uh, making things look real aspect because I want my uh, environments to look uh, like Disneyland rather than uh, something that I took went out in the backyard took a picture with my camera so uh, that kind of uh, illustrates that kind of concept now the last thing I'm going to kind of point out here with of course is the idea of starting out total darkness uh, and then adding your lighting element to make it look interesting uh, and more to the point of where you ultimately the destination that you want to he head up as far as your final lighting solution would be. So in this case, um, if your final lighting solution wants, you want to be uh, a daytime type of environment, then, uh, you know, you can, you can certainly uh, accommodate that. And that is just simply an illusion of what's occurring in the background as far as the skylight goes. So in this case, I'm using a dynamic lighting system that I can change my daylighting system to uh, either day or nighttime, which makes things convenient. So if I wanted to, we can just sort of take a, a different look as a perspective. What would happen if we actually create this more of as, as being daylight? So you can see that our lighting intensity has definitely increased. We still have um, a nice balance of lighting that is occurring based on the original lighting that I've incurred into this. And uh, it wouldn't be too difficult to animate this over time uh, based on uh, finding the butter zone as far as where we want the lighting to be. And as we move across, you can see even being daylight or nighttime, the, the lighting is still, overall lighting is still balanced. I don't really think it would be, even if I did animate it, this as a day nighttime type of map, that the, the effect would be too overly drastic as far as uh, uh, variations in light balancing would be that we you would normally see in real life, once again, as far as uh, uh, day and nighttime types of uh, effects uh, as to uh, realism uh, lighting uh, effects. So uh, it's a bit of a cheat, but hey. <laughs> okay, so once again, we can actually uh, go over to and use our, our uh, ambient cube to actually increase the intensity. And uh, ta-da, instantaneously we have, we're getting close to being in daylight in nature. But the uh, various different uh, kickers and, and lighting elements are adding enough of a boost to actually, uh, once again, maintain that... Uh, at, uh, that background contrast. See, if we're looking down here, we can still see some of the hint in the background. If we want to, we can, you know, make that a little bit more, a little bit more, uh, less aggressive. We can change our, our color balancing and, and use different color grading to uh, uh, to uh, control the uh, the lighting effect. Uh, this is how you would obviously want to be able to uh, be able to create a dynamic uh, daylight nighttime system is by uh, by um, you know connecting to into a, and uh, changing the uh, intensity levels between the uh, ambient cube map and the color grading which then you can create a proper balance between day and nighttime types of uh, renderings. Okay, so uh, the, trying to keep this down to about half an hour as usual. Uh, we'll call that uh, done. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, uh, hit us up at, at over at uh, uh, urbanterror.info uh, in our mapping section, and uh, we can uh, certainly follow up a little bit more. You know, I'm totally into into uh, into lighting theory, things like lighting theory. Theory is the thing that, that makes me, um, you know, kind of gel with this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, well, why bother doing something that's been done a hundred times before when you can experiment around with uh, different things that uh, Unreal 4 is capable of doing that uh, uh, make things a little bit more interesting, shall we say? Okay, enough of that for now. We'll talk to you later. See ya.